kids. What is up, cool kids? another land please take my hand and make your stand you know it will be grand because I have a plan I tell you man let's go to a place called Portugal cool kids that's right we're continuing our continuing series of silver coins around the world and uh, Eva will be our stewardess for today's adventure and she is going to lead us to a very exciting and fun fulfilling and fruitful Fateful, even trip to lovely, lovely Portugal. You know, this particular nation is one I've never been to, but that's a little loud. But unlike many of the places we discuss, I actually have a bit of a personal tie to this region as. My uh, father's side of the family hails from the Azores. We are, of course, talking about Portugal. Now, we've had several Portuguese coins in the series so far. Um, they came from other countries like Mozambique and uh, Angola, I believe, was one of them. Uh, yeah, Cata Verde. There, there's a bunch of them. Um, very cool. Unfortunately, as far as Portugal goes, I don't have much that's exciting. I have a bunch of stuff I got um, in the range of melt at the time of purchase. And that, yeah, that about sums it up. Um, these boat coins, lots and lots of these, just pages and pages of these boat coins, um, you know, near melt. Um, none of them are in amazing shape. They're all circulated. Uh, no, none of them are really slicks. I think I have some hold ones, though. But, uh, at the time of purchase, they'd be near melt. Otherwise, I wouldn't buy them. <sighs> I don't have the ASWs written on these, but in the future ones will have the ASW on them. But uh, I believe there's 64% silver. Let me check. Uh, 65. Well, I was close. 65. And uh, the ASW is like 0 0.8, 0 0.08. So. That's that as much silver as a dime. River Creek. 0 0.07, 0 0.08, somewhere in there. I, I don't have it written down. Probably 0.07. It's really close to what's in a dime. So each of these would have about the same amount of silver as a, as a U.S. dime. So $1.86 is a perfectly reasonable price to pay. Plus you get a cool boat coin. Um, I mean, I have, like I said, dozens and dozens of these things. You know, I buy them in lots, a lot of time. Uh, now, one thing to look out for on these, um, there are some harder dates. Um, anything in good condition is probably going to be worth a little more. Uh, they were heavily, heavily, here, just look. <laughs> heavily used. 
these coins actually saw some action. Now this one's well under milk. Uh, that's 0.14 uh, ASW and the same dollar 86. So what I used to do, guys, is I take the whole lot I bought and divide it the silver or the price by the number of coins, not by the silver weight. And so it kind of distorted how well I did on the bigger coins and made the smaller coins look more expensive. For example, uh, this is probably from the same lot. I don't know, it wouldn't be, but the dollar 86 coins, yeah, because they all had the same price. This is back when so spot was higher, obviously. Um, yeah, there's just a bunch of these. Nothing, they're all pretty much the same. The only thing difference is one will say 2.5 and one will say five on the back. But yeah, I got just pages and pages of these things. Um, Let's see if any of them really. I mean, I like them. They got the boats on them. Boats are cool. I like boats. All right. 65% silver, 0.146 ASW. That's why I say the, the 2.5 escudos are about the same amount of silver as a US dime. And, you know, so this is about the same amount of silver as a 20 cent coin would be, uh, a double dime. But since we don't have double dimes here in the States, we have the quarter, which adds another five cents, which, you know, puts us at the 1.18 where we're at with the quarter. So we're at 0.14. So, you know, four tenths of an ounce less or four hundredths of an ounce less, sorry. Um, so a little smaller than a quarter. So a little less sober. Like I said, it'd be about the same as a, a 20 cent coin if we kept making those instead of hating on them. Uh, the five escudos would be about equivalent to that. So, anyway, enough of that. There's a lot of cool Portuguese coins. I just don't own any, okay? I have some Brazilian issues, but we are we did that for Brazil. So, just go back to that video. Like I said, Angola, Mozambique, uh, there's a lot of places... Uh, that I've shown that had Portuguese issues of, you know, their holdings. And um, let's talk about Portugal proper. Yeah, we like that. That's the best part of those videos, aren't they? So Portugal, what do we know about Portugal? Well, we know that Portugal is a Southern European country on the Iberian Peninsula. We knew that. Yeah. And yeah, it has influenced many aspects of culture, such as grilled sardines, ooh, and salted cod. Oh well, beaches and ooh. And don't forget port wine. Port wine was a pretty nice innovation that the Portuguese brought to the world. Yeah. Do you guys know the story behind port wine? It, it was all a military thing. Yeah, that's what I'll do. But I invite you to go ahead and research it on your own. So let's look at the particulars of Portugal. They use the euro. Euro. Part of the euro zone. And, uh... They also have, this is where my people are from, the Azores. There's Madeira. And it is the westernmost point in continental Europe. And it is, let's see, let's look at continental Europe. Portugal is right there. It's the face of the Iberian Peninsula. A long, rich history going way back to antiquity. The region was held by Carthage as you may recall. 
And that was uh, right up here in North Africa. It was a Phoenician colony. And they went to war with these cats right here on this boot and got their faces stomped in. But if you remember, Hannibal came in through the Iberian Peninsula and successfully uh, put Rome to see, uh, siege. But he, uh, he was a little hesitant, and that cost him. All right. Anyway, if I remember right, he ends up dying out here. Hannibal. Maybe up. Yeah, somewhere. Anyway. Uh, Dar uh, what was that? Dacia. Dacia? I think it was. Or Anyway, it was somewhere up there where the Balkans are now. Yeah, it's been a while since I read about Hannibal. Let's see here. But Hannibal, yeah, he, he spent a lot of time in the Iberian Peninsula. Um, Gaelic folk, yeah, before the Romans came through and spanked, there was a lot of that. Uh, ah, this is important. So, after Rome fell, the Visigoths took over. They saw fit to take over the region, and they're kind of the, um, I don't know, the, the family, the royal family that still exists today is kind of, kind of, I say kind of because there was a lot of, uh, invaders, we'll say, from North Africa, um, who got involved in the bloodlines, but they are still, I guess, technically descended from the Visigoths. Juan Carlos and the crew, but it's, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, obviously it's been hundreds and hundreds of years, so. But anyway, they, they settled there, the Visigoths, and then when the, you know, Caliphate came through and conquered most of the region, they had a lot of influence, and there was a lot of interbreeding, and, and just a whole lot of stuff going on. But uh, Portugal, you know, it, it kind of always stayed its own thing. Um, you know, Sp Spain tried to take it over a couple times. It, it never quite worked out for any length of time. And, uh, they were big time explorers. They were some of the first big explorers. Vasco da Gama and all these cool cats. Capa Verde, that's, there you go. Seo Tomé and Principe. Uh, Portuguese Guinea, Angola, Mozambique. Those are the places, remember I was saying I had coins for? Well, there's a uh, Portuguese coins for Capa Verde. I don't think I have one. I have to, once they got their own uh, independence. But I do have Portuguese coins for Angola and Mozambique. So if you check out those videos, that's what you're going to see. There's uh, There was also uh, Portuguese uh, Macau right here. I have a coin from there that I've shown in some videos. Um... But there's also Portuguese India and Portuguese Timor, which reminds me, guys. In one of my videos, I tried to show you guys my uh, East Timor uh, medicine bottles. And I have located those. My uh, Mrs. Addicted to Minis decided, in her wisdom, to move them and turn them into a decoration. I will grab them real quick. Yeah, yeah. So to tell you the full skivvy on these, you gotta understand that um, when I did the video on the Laotian boat money, I bought these in the same lot. So these are all from a collector, the collector, and he, his wife was selling his collection on eBay. So these are made uh, with real uh, wood and real uh, horns, yeah, real bone, horns of critters, and you pop the top off here, and there's, a, you put the medicine powder in the, and these are all hand-carved, hand-carved medicine bottles from East Timor, and they're at least 50, 60 years old, 
Here's another one. This one actually has human hair and a penis. Yep, and a belly button. And it's the same deal we got. Yeah, articulating arms and legs. Yeah, and these are again hand sculpted with the bone. Very cool. Very premier. Kind of whittled together. And uh, yeah, very neat. Very neat. Anyway, enough of that. Oh, we gotta put you guys away. And they're supposed to bring good, positive energy. Positive energy. You know luck lucky good happiness so we'll put these guys back to protect us from all the naughty stuff and you know i'm thinking about it i could have saved that for my east timor video huh when we get there we're not there yet though um i don't have a coin from there yet <laughs> Maybe this Portuguese thing, Portuguese teamwork, could be my line into a coin from East Timor. Anyway, moving right along. We have to make sure it's the same place. Let's look. Uh, anyway, back to Portugal. Portugal, we'll do the economics and we'll get out of here. We won't go on all day. Ooh, there were some constitutional revisions in 1982 and 1989. Um, <sighs> the climate, it's a nice Mediterranean climate. I know fig trees and stuff grow there. Ooh, here's some pictures. Uh, uh, let's party there. Party time. It's every time. Yep. Um, doesn't look like it gets too cold there. Pretty mild, really. I like it. I like it. It sounds like, uh, see, I've always been a bit of a billy goat, so it sounds like my kind of place. Kind of makes sense, though. Ooh, there's, they got chameleons. Come a, come a, come a, come a, come a chameleon. All right, we'll put that, quit that right now. Ooh, here's our fun, uh, Influential fun friends. Oh wow. You come and go. Now I got that stupid song on my head, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, military, they have one. Laws, they have them. Uh, economics, let's go. Government, finance, there it is. Economy, these are the ones we like to see. Okay. It is a developed and high income country. The GDP is 74% of the average in the EU, a decrease from 76% in 2012. So we're going downhill. We're going down here in HDI of 0.864, which is 38th in the country, or 38th in the world, sorry, not country. And uh, the average uh, GDP per capita, is that what that is? Yeah, GDP per capita is 36,381, <clears throat> which isn't terrible considering the rest of the world's well below that. Um, so it's a developed nation, obviously. Uh, they do, they're focused on exports. Uh, they have a modern global economy, yada, yada, yada. And let's see if we got any rankings here. The average salary per month of a self-employed individual, uh, which is regulated by law, always helpful. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I guess it works for them. None of my business, but I have a feeling it's going to be our business real soon uh, when the, all the currencies go belly up. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, you're looking at a Western European nation. Uh, first world, happy, happy. Anyway, that's enough. We're got, we've got 20 minutes on this thing. Have an amazing day. I hope you find all the collectibles of your dreams while you're awake. 
And uh, please, 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 if you don't, well, don't blame me, because I tried. Be safe out there, and, uh, well, like, share, and subscribe. Take care.